All right, it's time for a new video. And first of all, I would like to wish you all a Merry Christmas because today is the 25th. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the graph. And yes, it's my second video on the graph. The first one was just to give you my opinion as to why you shouldn't FOMO into the graph right away and why I think the price should be a little bit lower. But this means that we are now going to take a look at what the graph is and why I think it's definitely an interesting project to take a look at. Of course, as always, you will find some timestamps in the description of this video so you can jump to the portion that is most interesting to you. If you like the sound of this, be sure to give this video a like and then we'll jump right in. I have to be honest, the first time that I looked at the graph, it was a little bit overwhelming, so I'll try to boil it down to the essence. So the goal of this project and the vision of the founders is that they want to see a world that lives in Web 3.0 and no longer in Web 2.0. Of course, they see that there's a lack of success so far for Web 3.0 development and they want to be the ones that help and change the mentality and get people to move from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0. So in their vision, Web 3 is a new stack for radically better internet. So their idea is to make a big database, let's call it just the database of the world and have all the data, knowledge and information publicly available for everyone. And in this way, democratizing um, the information to anyone who wants to have access to it and therefore hopefully will be able to make better applications and make everything more secure and so forth. So as you could have guessed, at the core is GraphQL. Let's just compare it to uh, SQL. This is a query language, very easy to understand, very easy to use. And this means that developers will very easily get access to important information, important data. When we talk about data, we think about databases, and that is also at the heart of this project. As we can see here, we have several different projects, and each of these projects has a database. Now, rather than running the database on their own servers, they will have some information publicly available and publicly accessible for anyone who wants to create an application that uses this data. So these databases are called subgraphs. And using the subgraph explorer, you'll be able to find all the different apps, in this case, decentralized apps, hence the name dApps. So with the explorer, you'll be able to find all the dApps that are sharing their information. So why is it important that we are no longer going to build apps, but that we're going to build dApps, which means decentralized apps. So first of all, and this is very important, I think, um, you'll own your own identity, data and reputation. They should be more reliable. Interoperability will be there. The security should be higher. I mean, if you have, for example, all the computers that are in the network of Ethereum, that is a lot more than you who is only able to pay, for example, one server, even 10, 20 servers, and you have to do your own security. In this way, we have a huge world computer, which is called the Ethereum network, and you have all the security available that's in the Ethereum network. Additionally, of course, we have programmable money, and then we have the governance aspect, meaning that Everybody in the community will have a voice in how a project is going and how everything is evolving. So when we look at the graph network, we see a few players. So first of all, we have the indexers, then we have the curators, and then we have the delegators. Basically, an indexer is somebody who will run a node. As a node operator, you can say, okay, hmm, let's see, uh, Uniswap uses the graph and they're sharing information. Well, I think that is very useful information and a lot of people will benefit from this and new dApps will be created upon this information. So I'm going to invest my um, resources in indexing this information. Second of all, we have the curators and those are the ones who are saying that they're keeping an eye on the community and saying, okay, I think this dApp is creating some real useful information or just this um, subgraph is really interesting because of this, this, and this reason. Uh, and I think this should be promoted more. And they will, for example, tell indexers, hey, take a look at this one because this is really interesting. Now to make sure that the latest and greatest is being spotted really quickly, um, there is a bonding curve. So the sooner somebody is able to promote or curate this information, the bigger the rewards will be. So there's always a monetary um, incentive attached to it. Indexers will get 
and some of the funds each time somebody queries this information curators will also get their portion because they were the ones who uh, who alerted the indexer of this new and great information source and then lastly we have the delegators those are the people who are not able to run a node themselves but they are going to use their graph tokens and stake them essentially with the indexers so here we come to the essence of the people who founded The Graph. So we at The Graph believe that Web3 is going to be the next big platform and that millions of dApps will come to the market and displace Web 2.0 monopolies. This also brings us to the vision of several people in the cryptocurrency and they say that the blockchain technology will engulf the internet. And personally, I can see this vision pretty clearly as well. I mean, the main problems with the current internet are um, privacy and security. With blockchain, you are solving these issues. I can easily believe that blockchain will be able to engulf the internet as we know it right now, just as the internet has engulfed the whole um, telecom industry. I look forward to the moment that my identity is in a secure and decentralized blockchain, rather than my identity, my name, my address and so forth being in a million databases. I mean, each time you go to a website, you go to a web shop, you have to register the same information over and over and over again. And you have to hope that all those different shops are doing everything they have to to keep your data secure. I mean, this is so unlikely. They even usually don't even know that they have been hacked. So your information is there on the dark web a million times over. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to a secure way and a decentralized way to store my personal information that I can check, own and follow up on. And I'm also happy to see that they understand that the way to Web 3.0 comes through the developers. I mean, if you don't have any good dApps, then the people won't follow. And then they quickly summarized the whole concept. After the iPhone was released, a wave of mobile apps came to the market. So basically, that's what they want to do. They want to give you the tools. They want to create a platform that allow you to create great dApps. All right, then when we go to the graph.com slash docs, we get all the documentation that we need. I couldn't find um, a real white paper with these words. So you'll have to choose between hosted services and some information on the network. They have a nice diagram here that explains you the whole flow. So let's just quickly go over it. So a decentralized application adds data to the Ethereum network. So basically all the information will be on the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, the question is how can you get all this information out quickly and easily without having to write your own code over and over again? This is where the graph comes in. And if you want to know more about how the graph works for developers, be sure to check out this video. You will see a link popping up right now, or you'll find a link in the description of this video. This is a only 15 minute video. It's really worth looking at. It made a lot clear to me after I read all the information on the website. It was this video that really gave me clarity on the whole concept of the graph. So then on October 13th, we have the announcement of the graph token sale and distribution. So here we got some more information. So GRT is an ERC20 token. GRT is the official ticker. Then we have sale.thegraph.com. Of course, this is already uh, too late. This was a pre-sale. And then we had the official launch, of course. This month was the launch of the mainnet on the 17th, which was then, of course, immediately pushed by Coinbase and then picked up by a lot more big exchanges. And this, of course, pushed the price up really quickly and created a lot of hype and buzz around this token. And the reason why this was launched immediately on Coinbase because uh, this project was part of Coinbase Ventures, which is their launch platform. These are the project that they invest in directly. And of course, logically, if a project is successful, they will immediately put it on their exchange and then you will have the famous Coinbase effect. So as you can see, if you would have followed the blogs and you were interested in this project and you jumped in in October, you were able to buy the token at three cents. And when we then take a look at CoinGecko, we see that it launched at about 13 cents and shortly after it mooned all the way up to 73 cents, which is of course insane if you would have bought it at three cents. Then we see the correction that I said that I think is a correct value, which is between 30 cents and 40 cents. And right now we are right in that range. So I'm definitely considering for myself 
in making a very small investment in this project because I really like the, uh, the concept. Now we see that the tokens will be distributed in different phases and that everybody had an individual cap and this cap is, I think, was determined pretty arbitrary. Um, you had to fill in a form and depending on the answers, you had a different profile, I guess. Thankfully, we also see that there is a lockup period. This is always good for price stability. And then here we have the real token allocation. So overall, 35% will go to the community, 70% will be for early backers. Then we have the backers. Then 23% goes to the early team and advisors. And then we have 8% for the edge and node. And the vesting period is um, in a range between six months and 10 years. So that's a, uh, a serious long-term view that you have to have if you're in that 10 year section which also shows a lot of confidence if you agree to this, uh, to this vesting schedule. Then at launch, as we've seen, 12.5% of the total supply would be available. And when we look at coin market cap, I think that is pretty, uh, pretty accurate. I mean, there is 10 billion tokens out there and we have 1.2 billion tokens that are available. So yes, that's uh, 12%. I mean, that's always good to see that a team is following the plan that they outlined and that there is not a big difference in what they promise and what actually happens so that's good now when we go down here we see the exact distribution and who gets what and all the information you need is right in here so we have the testnet the curator program early backers graph foundation and so forth so if you want to know more be sure to check out this blog post otherwise it would be a, a very long video if i go over this in detail but so far looking good then we have a second blog post explaining the exact tokenomics. So we go back to the index curator, delegator and so forth and who will be earning what in the graph economy. The next thing I always like to look at is the team. Sadly, I couldn't find any direct information on the team on the website. So I think that is definitely a point of improvement. Um, but when you look at Medium and all different posts that we see that Yanev Tal is the CEO of the project and the main project lead. So let's take a look at Crunchbase. Then we see that Yanev is from Austin, Texas. He is an individual angel investor. Then we see that he has something to do with Tap Savvy, Tap Savvy Table Talk lets table services restaurants receive feedback from their customers while they're still at the table. Sadly, we don't see any information on the graph. So when we go to LinkedIn, we see that he is the project lead at the graph. We see some more background information right here. We see that he has a background in electrical engineering. We see that Tap Savvy, at least that he left there. So maybe the information on Crunchbase is no longer accurate. We then see that he worked at MuleSoft. He's been definitely been a busy bee. So let's take a look at the graph protocol, see who else works there. We see 27 people on LinkedIn. So that's really very public. So that's good. Let's take a look at the employees. So when we take a look at the other people, then we see Brendan Ramirez, which he worked with in the past. Then we see more technical knowledge. Then we see some business knowledge. We see some creative. Then we see a community specialist. So this is all looking uh, looking pretty good. And last not but least, we see we take a look at the use cases. Of course, Uniswap is very well known. Synthetics is very well known. Aragon, I covered this project in a previous video. If you want to know more about Aragon, be sure to click the link in the description of this video or the link that pops up right now. So basically, Aragon is focused on creating DAOs. This means decentralized organization, and they also have a court system. And then going down, we see that they are backed by a whole bunch of people, among which is Coinbase Ventures. As usual, you should always check one or two of these claims. How can you do that? Well, very simply type in the graph and Coinbase Ventures and see what pops up. So we see a post on Coindesk and then we see earn graph on Coinbase. So if Coinbase is willing to list somebody who is claiming that they have a partnership with them, then you can be pretty certain that they have a partnership. And then we even see the Nasdaq making a post on the fact that Coinbase Ventures invests 5 million in the graph. 
So yeah, I think this all checks out. Last not but least, be sure to check out their socials. So they've got 33k on Twitter and a solid 18k on Telegram. So this is definitely a vibrant community that is very alive. And then it's also interesting to take a look on GitHub because thankfully they are promoting a decentralized future, very open and accessible to everyone. So the least you could expect is that they are on GitHub and yes, they are. So yeah, what is my final conclusion of this project? I think it's definitely an interesting project. I do believe in the future of decentralized applications and I think a unified decentralized database is definitely part of it. When it comes to token supply, of course, there are a lot of tokens that will be in distribution and the entire success of the graph will be dependent on, first of all, the success of crypto being used, then second of all, the success of Web 3.0. And then thirdly, if people are moving over to Web 3.0, are they going to use the graph or are they going to use a competitor? So this is all of course very unclear but i think the, the project is definitely interesting and i think it's worth taking a look at of course always do your own research all right that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it and i think you did if you made it all the way to the end so be sure to give it a like also always post a comment it can be something meaningless as thank you for the video but this way hopefully we get picked up by the youtube algorithm i got a very small channel and i hope to grow it quickly thanks to your support if there are also a different project that you would like me to cover be sure to post a comment that's it thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video bye